short technical presentation, we will be looking at how to have multiple configurations using iLogic with inside an Inventor assembly file. First off, we start off with a part or assembly and we can assign what's called an entity name. The entity name will be referenced later on with inside iLogic. Please remember that iLogic is case sensitive when referencing things like entity names or parameters. We add a filter in and a filter out. Then moving back into our assembly file, we can do the same on the other components within our assembly. Now, although we're only referencing three components here, you can do this throughout your whole assembly. So we just add an inlet pipe and an outlet pipe. Then we're ready to jump into the iLogic coding. Now we jump across to the iLogic browser and you'll notice that we have a few rules already created and have a few lines of code in there and this is purely just to save time on this video. We have a variable set for where the directory of this file is going to be saved and also uh, we specify here the folder and the file name so the folder being filters where we're going to pick up all of our filters and components from. We're now going to use the snippets on the left hand side to add additional code to our rule. This allows us to manage our iLogic assembly. If you do want to follow along or try this for yourself, you can either pause the screen to type out the code or you can use the file attached uh, where you can just simply copy and paste the full code, change it to suit your system and away you go. We're going to tell iLogic now which components we're going to use and that's going to reference the filter file name and the filter file name is what we've uh, already set above. We're now going to add the constraint from the relationship snippets on the left hand side. As you can see we have a multitude of different constraints to pick from and this by just selecting the snippets will add the full lines of code so you don't need to remember in which order you need to write things by renaming the actual constraint name if required. We can now add the part in which we wish them to reference, add in the entity name which was in on our in pipe, allowing iLogic to now specify which part you want to bring in, which was the filter, and then the entity is going to be filter in. Again, remembering that this is case sensitive. We can save and run this to see what happens to our component. Now, although our component's moved, it's not really in the correct position. And this is because our oppose axis is shown false. So we need to oppose that axis in order for it to keep that the correct orientation. So we'll just specify this to true and we'll save and run. And as you can see, the filter will now spin round to the correct orientation that we require. Now we are happy with this. What we can do now is copy and paste this code so we can reference the other side of our filters with the filter out. Don't forget to change your constraint name. You can't have two constraints with the same name. We need to reference the out pipe, the entity to be out, which we referenced earlier. So filter and then filter out again, remembering that this is all case sensitive. We're leaving the post axis as true, save, and voila, we now have the filter in place. So as you can see in our parameters, we only have one uh, reference, which is our filter, which we have in place there now. So we're gonna go back into iLogic and we're gonna get rid of those comments on the lines of code. Now what this does is a very quick way of now referencing all of our components within a folder. We have a list of all their names across the top there. And if we save and run that, if we go back into our parameters box now, you will see that we have a list of all of our different components. And not only that, if we select one of these filters, it's now referencing that filter. But let's go one step further than that and use an iLogic form. A very simple form, but very effective. We can just go through and select all of the different filters which reside within that folder and are listed within our parameters. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for joining.